How you doing? Great. Uh, can I ask you what your, obviously your position is uh, pro-life, anti-abortion? Pro-human rights. Pro-human rights. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Human, right? Right, yeah. Agree? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, could I ask uh, what your, uh, besides this, you're here on the, the day that Trump is going to nominate his uh, Supreme Court, right, mm -hmm. Justice. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we're looking for uh, justice that will interpret the Constitution as written. You will not find the right to kill a prenatal child anywhere in the Constitution. You see, when the Constitution was written, the Founding Fathers could never imagine reaching into a mother's womb and harming that child. So you can look as hard as you want in that Constitution, that right does not exist. So we're looking for justices that will not write policy on the Supreme Court. If America wants to kill her children, then we need to legislate that. We need to put an amendment in the Constitution, but you won't find it in the current Constitution. So that's why we're out here. Well, that's, that's the type of justice I'm looking for. All right, so things that actually deal with the Constitution, not with uh, judicial review, not you know, throw an opinion on uh, social issues, right? Which sometimes these justices mm -hmm. tend to kind of skirt towards, right? Well, what's a social issue exactly? Like, uh, like this, for example. That's not a social issue. It's a human rights issue. Well, you, you say it's a human rights issue, uh -huh. but it's, you all say that it also has nothing to do with the Constitution. Right. Right. So this the Constitution to... is all about social issues. Politics is all about social okay, issues. Okay, you can say that. Okay, I can see that. Right. Um, now, what do you think about the, when people make the comments that, uh, uh, that they're afraid that they might uh, overturn Roe versus Wade? Well, it was an unconstitutional, unjust oh, decision, go. right? Yeah. So we're looking for justices that interpret the comp Constitution as written. Right. And it's not to be, I think, something that a lot of them kind of forget, a lot of leftists forget, is that before uh, Roe versus Wade, it wasn't illegal in the country. Uh, right. right. You can actually go to California or New York to have it done. In Texas, if it was a threat to your health or life endangerment, you could have it done, right? So that's not an abortion. That's where a lot of people are confused, even on the pro-life side. They believe that if you provide care to a mother experiencing difficulties in pregnancy, that that's somehow an elective abortion. That's like a miscarriage. What the pro-life movement is against is what Planned Parenthood does. The 97 plus percent of abortions that are committed in this country have nothing to do with the health of the mother. Right, that's usually like uh, less than one percent. So if, yeah. let's say, a mother has a ectopic pregnancy, the child is growing in the fallopian tube. That child will kill that mother. We have no disagreement with providing the medical care required to save the mother's life. Because if the mother dies, the child dies. Right. So the left and those that support killing prenatal children like to use that as a wedge. But I implore America to understand that that is not abortion, not elective induced abortion at all. Right, that's, that's a circumstance, right? Uh, that kind of life endangerment. Uh, which you're right, you're correct. A lot of them make it seem like this is, they put it out there as a reason, but it's a reason that happens at a very rare chance. It's not and a frequent thing. it's not even thing, an abortion. Right? And even people who have abortions today uh, face complications and many have, uh, I mean, there's, there's some that have died from abortions, oh, yeah. right? So it's not like you, you save yourself from, uh, from having these abortions, you can also die from having an abortion as well. It's funny that Ireland just recently uh, passed a referendum to allow killing prenatal children up to 12 weeks. So they had a constitutional amendment protecting children. They're, they just had a referendum to overturn that. What was interesting, one of the only industrialized Western nations that had a constitutional protection for children in the womb had the lowest mortality rates for pregnancy of any nation on earth. So how do you explain that? If abortion is so much safer than birth, why did Ireland's mortality rate for pregnancy, why was it the lowest in the industrialized world? That's a good question. So yeah, nobody wants to talk nobody about that. Talk about that, yeah. yeah. So you say you're um, a human rights activist then, right? Oh, yeah. So you would be against um, groups, agencies, organizations that would threaten the life of a human being? Absolutely. Right. Uh, even if it was your own government, right? There's only two times that you should ever kill another human being. That's in defense of your own life, right. in the defense of another person's yeah. life. That's it. That's so it. if you're leading me down a road that, well, what about warfare? Well, what about the police? Right. If someone were to walk up to you right now and start stabbing you, the police officer is fully within his authority 
to remove that threat, right? The, or you're in full authority to remove that threat. Yeah, absolutely. So in some cases, government agencies should apply lethal force. But we should never apply lethal force against an innocent child. No, I agree with that. Um, now, did you know that the Supreme Court won here, Warren versus District of Columbia, have decreed in Winnebago versus Deshaney County that the government, the police, have no obligation, no duty to protect their life, liberty, and property? Yeah, what do you well, think about that? Well, I'm totally against that, yeah. right? <laughs> so this is the same city, the same city that doesn't allow concealed carry permit right? to defend they leave yourself. You defenseless. And then they say, well, the police don't have to defend you. So. Explain right. that to Explain me. Explain that. That's why there's right. a higher one of the murder capitals in the world at some point here. We right, here. Yeah, Southeast D.C. Go well, out there later not anymore. They want to return it back to the good they old days. They want to return it, apparently. yeah. Right. Look at a lot of these uh, heavy democratic control cities, right? like Baltimore. They have a section in their newspaper say murder of the week. Right? And some of the highest abortion rates. See, when you use violence to solve perceived problems, we see that as wrong. That's a human rights violation. Yeah. Abortion is an act of violence against an innocent child to solve a problem. So when a criminal uses violence to solve a perceived problem, in other words, he needs money to solve his problem, he may hurt another human being to take their money. Right. It's the same exact thing that's going on with abortion. In fact, over 95% of abortions, if you look at the reasons, are socioeconomic. Mothers say, this child is threatening my way of life, my lifestyle, and my standard of living. And so they pay an abortionist to kill that child. What's the difference between a criminal killing another human being and a mother killing her own child for gain? Okay, I, I like where you're going with this. What do you think of um, when government robs you, but they call it taxes, right? Yeah. When you don't give your explicit consent to them, right? If, a, if, a, if I'm not wearing a government uniform, it's theft if I come and take your money without your consent, mm -hmm. without your permission. Well, when government does it wearing a blue costume, we call it something else. Do well, not call it the respect, same thing. I'm, I'm really only focused on violence against human beings. Well, I'm a, uh, me too. Yeah. Me too. That is violence against me. People go yeah. to cages for not giving up their money to the government. Yeah. Right? People. Uh, well, there has to be consequences died. for crimes. Yeah. Cons but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really well, focused on this particular issue. Well, I mean, these are human rights. I'm a human yeah. rights activist too. And I'm against all violence, especially that done to children. Mm -hmm. Right? Especially that done to no matter how small or tall you are. Right? Yeah. And I see taxation as a form of theft, as a violence against peaceful people. If you don't give government your money, they throw you in jail. If you resist, they murder you, right? Um, and there's no obligation for them to protect you. So it's kind of funny, I think, when the government says we're here to protect you, they have no obligation to protect you, but first for them to make that claim, they say first we have to take your money by force, and then we can protect your money or your property, right? Yeah. Is it something, uh, I don't know, to think about in a back burner later on in the evening about that? I what, appreciate your opinion on that. Yeah. Well, I really what? have no comment have on no taxes because <laughs> I want to. Okay, make yeah, yeah. Sure what, what do you think about this gentleman over there? Has, is uh, anti circumcision, mm -hmm. right? Um, I myself am anti. I call it gender mutilation, right? The yeah. sanctity of a whole baby. I think it's absolutely born. is. You agree with that too? It's once again a violation of someone else's bodily well, autonomy. There we go. That's great to hear. Just yeah. like this child. Yeah. That is not his mother's body, because his mother didn't abort herself. If a, he was his mother's body. His mother would be dead, not him, right? Right. These so just like that, the people on the left like to claim that we should all have a right to our bodies. We agree. But I would challenge everybody listening to take a look at that little round scar on your abdomen. That's proof that you've always been you, and it's always been your body. Because that's where your umbilical cord once provided oxygen and nutrients, right? Right. People so easily forget that they were once prenatal children. Because it's real, real easy to be pro-choice now that you've been safely born. And we're just here to remind people that you've always been you. Yeah. Right? Uh, appreciate this conversation. I myself would be pro-life, but extended to uh, not just children and babies, uh, to human, de human beings and their uh, cohesive relationship with government. Because uh, everything government does is top down. They could tell you what you can do with your life, liberty, your house, uh, some laws with your body, right? But you can't tell them the same way, right? So I would implore you to maybe expand this universally to well, include a. Uh, if you're assuming that we're not pro life after birth, we are. Yeah. In fact, if you look at all the pregnancy resource centers, all the soup kitchens, and all the uh, other organizations that help homeless, yeah. just ask the people running them if they're pro life or not. Right. They'll never go, oh yeah, I'm pro-choice, I'm a leftist. Right. 
It's the pro-life community that protects human beings from the moment of fertilization until the moment of natural death. We're there for them. Okay. I think we should also be there for them against government because government threatens when, your life, right? For victimless crimes like smoking a plant, right? Things like that. You go to jail, you try to escape, you're murdered. Your life is taken away, right? Well, once again, I'm here to focus be a here. voice yeah, for yeah. the prenatal children. Okay. All right. But well, I appreciate your <laughs> I appreciate your conversation. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for sir. coming out.